Okay. So early in the process, we were knowing we're going to connect, but not knowing how, what structural system. So we're fishing around for formal studies as well as you know structural logics. We had called up Keystone Hood and asked those guys about um, investigating a set of acrylic frames. We were thinking of carving some, uh, as you see in the lower right image, some you know skeletal uh, like portal frames made out of acrylic at like a three foot interval or four foot interval. And um, then we looked at doing a composite structure with carbon fiber or fiberglass shell structure. And um, we looked at doing a, um, what do you call it, grid shell as well. And then, you know, we kind of moved through those. We ended up with the concept of trying to do a thinner self-supporting shell structure. You see the blue image in, in the middle, you know, the concept of making it up of discrete you know, parts was preferred because, you can go to the next slide and I can talk through the mm -hmm. flow here. This is a little diagram of our flow. So on the left is, you know, what I would call problem setting. And in that phase, we were discussing um, ways in which to keep it um, less invasive on the property itself. The garden, after our 2010 construction, had gotten to a point where it was really firing well and client was super happy with the way things were on site and the art collection was rolling and we just didn't want to come in and set up a huge construction zone and stick build something on the property. So the concept was to have things made in you know discrete parts that could also flatten out the fabrication timeline. So we were thinking of it right from the beginning as maybe doing this kind of uh, voxel structure. So you can go to the next. Here, this is just a zoom in of the left side of that diagram and talks about what we were looking at. One of the caveats I said uh, to Mark earlier is that, you know, this is a very nonlinear, uh, multi-scalar, you know, process. We're working at full scale day one. We're building stuff at full scale to test some of our concepts and we're working at, you know, very fine grain and trying to figure out this structural system and many different softwares, many different people looking at the softwares. And we're trying to build up a bolus of information at this point in time that something's going to um, start to have a little bit of inertia. If you would picture it like a swarm of, you know, like bees or something that this kind of builds up and it gets its weightedness to the early investigation. So that's why I call it problem setting because we're producing a lot of models. We made hundreds. You'll go to the next slide. Actually, if I can pause here for a moment, um, it's probably a decent time. I know you've talked about using mind mapping software, um, you know, to, to um, kind of um, shape, I guess, your process, your design process, or as a tool for helping you visualize your process. Since we're looking at these um, these diagrams right here. Can you just talk a little bit about how you're using mind mapping software in your practice? Yeah, for uh, because our stuff is nonlinear, and we are also uh, we have a very specific, you know, defined set of concepts up front. We'll talk through it. We'll talk with our clients. We develop something that's what we call our lofty goals, right? But between the lofty goals and moving through a day in the studio with a bunch of guys who are young, relatively young, and many different levels of experience, you need something to give them liberty to run at different paces and run at different depths of consideration, different angles of attack, and yet um, still have that concrete, we know where we're going. So oftentimes I'll bang out a mind jet or mind map uh, tool early and use that as you know, kind of just a brain dump, but then it gets hierarchically organized and also we can use that as a relationship for time forward scheduling. The other thing that we do is we use a um, an Excel spreadsheet that we built which uses, a, it's a timesheet that we use which is based on percentage only and not on, you know, everybody takes the number of hours they want to work and, but we'll parse components of the project up into, you know, weighted percentages and then we distribute the load into people's um, work week by saying, you know, this has X percent of your time. I don't know if you're going to work three hours, I don't know if you're going to work 75, but 
of that, this hierarchically has that. So between the mind maps and that timesheet, it helps allow um, what we think is the psychology of the person on the team that is working on the piece has to be in the optimal state. You know, you might want to mm -hmm. feel like working on something one day, maybe working out in the shop because you had a rough day the day before, or you know, you want to just put headphones on and sit at the computer. The liberty to allow people to do that comes from these two tools. Okay.